Thank you. Thank you. We'd like to welcome everyone to the Board of Education meeting today. Um, we're meeting earlier than we normally meet due to uh, trying to accommodate getting people home a little earlier because of all the difficult situations that so many people are having to deal with these days. Um, but we're glad that all of you that are here have have attended. Um, I began to practice back when uh, people started filing for elections to recognize any folks that are attending our meeting that are running for school board. And uh, I understand Allison Idle and Adam Peggy are back in the back there. I didn't see anyone else, but if y'all would stand and just wave at us there, we appreciate y'all being here today. And of course, Marshall Ashcraft is also a current board member. He has to be here, uh, <laughs> and he does so willingly. Uh, and we, again, appreciate you being here and everyone that, that is with us. Uh, we've been through some just times that are hard to describe. And uh, of course, just, uh, what's in my mind today is gratitude for uh, so many people who have done so much, I, I, I remain, I'm always proud of our schools and our, our school staff and the, our leadership and our, our teachers and the other staff members. And they certainly responded uh, during this crisis. And, uh, Dr. Alexander has uh, been remarkable in our leadership of marshaling resources uh, and opening up, opening up supply and feeding stations in our schools and kind of helping the community and our, our principals and teachers have reached out to our our families and kids to make sure they're okay. And, uh, the pride I have is just magnified in terms of what quality school system we have and quality people we have working in it. Um, but, you know, not just with us, with our churches. I was talking to Jason Cornett before the meeting about how our churches, often the community has stepped up to take care of the people in their communities and uh, our Fire departments, or volunteer and paid fire departments, businesses, local, just citizens, everybody stepping up to help everybody. And communities really pull together. And I, I think as we go into this meeting today, I just want to keep all the gratitude for all of the folks' efforts in mind. And, and we always begin our sessions with a moment of silence, and we'd like to ask you to join us in that before we start our meeting. So if we can have a moment of silence, uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Let me ask if any of our board members or superintendent has anything about the agenda that we need to discuss or adjust before we end the meeting. Oh, I should mention Dr. J. Fenwick is here remotely with us. He's coming in on that computer right there, and uh, and uh, and we appreciate Dr. Fenwick's uh, extra effort to connect in on the meeting today. Uh, other board members not present, Mr. Steve Combs. Some of you may have heard uh, Mr. Combs became homeless during the crisis. Uh, his his house was flooded, and he's had to receive temporary shelter in two different locations, and it's going to be long term. And he called and talked to him prior to the meeting. He said. He just could not be here today uh, and because he's just moved into a new place to live for a few weeks and working with the, all the agencies that are in our area now trying to help people get their homes restored and back into them. So uh, uh, he would be here if he could today. And having said that and made those acknowledgments, Dr. Alexander, let me turn it over to you for your report. Board members, student board reps, Mr. Campbell, um, members of our audience, administrators, teachers, guests, welcome. It's good to have you guys. A lot's happened since the last time we were together, for sure. Um, Hurricane Helene has definitely brought things to our county that we have not seen before. Devastation around, but it's also brought a lot of people together, and I've never seen so much compassion and willingness to support one another. It's, it's truly humbling. 
Um, I really can't say enough about our administrators, our teachers, our staff members for reaching out to find families and to take care of them. Um, you know, I've gotten some positive emails, which I appreciate, but those emails really should go to those folks because they're the ones that have made everything happen. Um, I'm truly humbled to get to, to get to work with them. You know, we've had some media coverage in our county lately, and it's here because of the devastation, but if you've noticed, most of it ends up talking about the strength of our community. And so I think just super proud of Watauga County, and I can't think of a, a place that I'd rather work. I think seeing another county where people are more willing to show up for each other, it's hard to imagine. So it's just, it's been a tough experience, but it's been a humbling one and one that I'm grateful to be a part of. So we've been busy, um, lots of good stuff happening through our schools. Um, Watauga High School, Green Valley, Cove Creek have been distribution sites. I really appreciate uh, those principals and those staff for making sure that happens. Um, Hardin Park has been um, amazing with their ability to provide free childcare, and so we're really thankful for that. Um, Maple has also been a feeding site, um, so thankful for all the work that, that those teachers and staff have done to make that happen. Um, so we will continue to focus on feeding sites this coming week. However, we are going to return our, our turn our focus to making sure our schools are ready to receive students. So clearing out those auxiliary gyms, um, we've got high school athletics happening this week, so lots of good stuff happening. We're going to make sure that we, that we focus on that. Um, the bulk of our work this next week will be um, our transportation issue because the reason that we can't bring back students back to school is due to transportation. So We've been working closely with the, with the NCDOT to look at our secondary routes, um, our limited A routes. We learned last Thursday that those would not be accessible for some time. And the reason those are not accessible is not only the structure of the road, because some of that has been compromised. There's also been heavy vehicles across those roads, which also further limit um, the structure there. So we look, have to look at that. We also have to look at low hanging um, wires or tree branches that are, might be hanging down because a bus is considered a high profile vehicle so while a family vehicle could pass that way uh, the school buses can't so because we don't want to wait for some time in November to come back to school this week is going to be used to identify community stops so far the transportation team has identified 63 community stops that'll probably be closer to 70 by the end of the week um, we, it's not only identifying them though, we have to get permission from business owners or property owners and we actually have to sign into an agreement that that stop can be used. In addition, we have, the transportation team has to work on route timing and communication to parents about when drop off and pickup times will be. In addition, we have to come up with safety procedures so that we can ensure student safety at those locations. So that will be the work of our team this week. But I feel it's a lot of work, but I really feel confident that they'll be able to do it. Um, just ask for patience um, as we work through all those details. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Oh, I have some recognition dates I need to talk about. So really quickly before I turn it back over to you. It's National Principal Month, and we're going to have some fun celebrating that in a minute. It's also National School Lunch Week, October 7th through the 11th. October 2nd is School Custodian Day. October 16th is National Bosses Day. And October 21st to the 25th is National School Bus Safety Week. Well, thank you, Dr. Alexander. Um, it is now time to hear from our student representatives, Ms. Elliott and Ms. Libre. Libre, excuse me. I did, got it right last week. You messed up this one. Uh, so and I'm very eager to hear how, uh, what y'all have to share with us today. Uh, good afternoon, school board members, Dr. Alexander, Mr. Campbell, and everyone joining us in the audience. First off, we would like to recognize all of the families who have been affected by the hurricane and also the support that our schools have been able to show to our community. Um, the high school has, in particular has been extremely active in providing resources and support for our community members. Directly after the hurricane, the high school became a distribution site for water then quickly became much more providing everything from food to toiletries to baby products um, that any members of the community could come to and pick up items for free and the athletes for good club also opened up the care closet in the um, library which has been open this whole week which provided uh, community members with any free clothing items that they needed so that has been very um, impactful and beneficial for our community 
and it's also giving students the opportunity to volunteer and get involved in the community during this time. Yes, we've seen so many student volunteers um, work throughout the day and helping provide uh, resources for families and students. Uh, on another note, this fall we introduced a new generation of student voters um, for this presidential election. Uh, students who turn 18 before November 5th will have the opportunity to vote for this pivotal election. Um, many have already registered at the DMV or by mail. Uh, the Political Pioneers, a student organization out of Tanner High School, is providing many resources uh, for students to become more informed in their candidates and in new initiatives. Um, teachers, along with the California School Newspaper, has also provided uh, resources, websites, and uh, FAQs to help students learn more about the upcoming election. Um, as Dr. Alexander already mentioned, it is Principal Appreciation Month. So we would like to thank all of our school's principals for the tremendous amount of work they put into our students to provide them with the best education and learning experience possible. And we would specifically like to give a shout out to Mr. Strickler. Um, Mr. Strickler is an extremely supportive person and has a personal connection with almost every student at the high school. He tries to brighten everyone, everyone's days. He shows up to all uh, sporting events, um, theater and arts events. And um, he has also been very supportive of allowing students to uh, be volunteers at the high school for different um, uh, events after the hurricane and also planned events such as a uh, cookout and movie showing for students to come together after the hurricane, which was a really great opportunity for students to come together during this time. Yeah, I believe I was showing the cards. It's definitely clear that we have all the um, the Teachers Cadets program at the high school is a program that allows students to experience first-hand teaching in a live classroom. Uh, students directly interact with their children in the class and um, are able to intern at these elementary schools to really experience what it's like to teach before they go into a teaching program. Um, this experience provides students insight into the nature of teaching, which is very respectful. And uh, the challenges of schooling, which helps students in all aspects, even if they're not interested in directly um, teaching at high school or community. I believe that is all that we have for you all. Um, we want to thank you again for all the support. Um, we just love seeing the community come together during such a difficult time. Thank you, but uh, I was remiss in not recognizing also when I was commenting earlier about how much our students have helped out with all of the activities. I've seen regular Facebook posts about how our students have come to the sites and helped with many different things in terms of helping our community. So uh, just again doubly proud of our, of our outstanding folks, outstanding students. Um, it is time now for some special recognition and uh, I'll move to start out with Ms. Beth Cross from the NCDPI. Uh, we have a very important dignitary. <laughs> well, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Childers, board members, student reps, Mr. Campbell, <coughs> Dr. Alexander. Um, I, I thank you. I bring greetings from our senior director, Sneha Shock Coltrane, and my colleagues in the Office of Advanced Learning and Gifted Education. Don't think I need it. At the North Carolina Department of Public Instruction. Uh, I grew up just a few short, uh, short way from here in uh, the foothills of Surrey County where we quite literally look up to the mountains for, and respect them for their fortitude and beauty. Um, so we've been praying, donating, and planning for the support in this area uh, after the unthinkable happened just a few or a couple weeks ago. Though your schools are not in session, I humbly thank you for inviting me in to honor our regularly scheduled recognition for Wataga. Uh, schools. Our office has recognized 13 AIG promising districts in North Carolina that have sustained over time many practices for expanding excellence and opportunities for students, teachers, and staff. These districts have not only responded to the North Carolina AIG program standards we have in place or in state board policy, but they have also taken it to the next level and have mastered the connections in and between practices, uh, resulting in a synergy 
of both innovation and commitment, thereby building capacity and systems within their district for the betterment of students so they can thrive in our public schools. And when times like these happen, systems and capacity is, is what you lean on. Uh, Watauga County Schools has focused on professional learning for teachers, equitable identification practices, including the use of local norming, and talent development to cultivate potential and create an environment where their gifted students can thrive, honoring the state definition of academically or intellectually gifted students to those as those who perform or show the potential to perform at high levels of accomplishment when compared to other peers of their age or experience or environment. All of this is accomplished through a commitment that your district has made to have an AIG specialist in every building so that there is an advocate for gifted and advanced learners in every school because what many assume is that gifted learners will be just fine on their own. Uh, what you realize, what you realize in Watauga County Schools is that every child deserves to learn something new every day. <coughs> and as in athletics, we know that our most skilled, best athletes still need coaches to teach and guide them. Our advanced learners need teachers who will do the same. Watauga County Schools has implemented a comprehensive and thoughtful local AIG plan and program that you have, you have supported, you have approved, that continues to strive for excellence. We are so delighted to recognize uh, Watauga County Schools as an AIG Promising District. Uh, Jake Orange, we wanna do the ceremonial handing out here. We are grateful for the leadership and innovation shown in the district, and we are hopeful that others will learn from your example and begin to implement your practices. Congratulations on this recognition, and we look forward to seeing your continued growth and excellence. Thank <clears throat> you.